Hello everybody, welcome back to Anger 14. This is the second episode in our series of upgrading the Zonsen CA500 to a KFA 135 horsepower engine. We have decided that we will do a third episode and in that episode we'll only be looking at all the engines from Zonsen, the performance, DBOs, etc. For this video we will be discussing the kit that we sell at KFA for the upgrade uh, of the 100 horsepower engine, uh, what you get in the kit and also your options. In order to lower the compression ratio of the engine, you have two choices. You can either use a piston, which is a low compression piston, or you can install a shim between the barrel and the crankcase. The piston is obviously a more expensive choice, where the shim is a very affordable uh, option and it's the option that we use mostly at KFA. Dylan will be joining us from here on and Dylan will take you guys through the upgrade of this engine. Okay guys let's get straight into it. So first things we're going to need to do we're going to take the carbs off, we're going to take the fuel pump off and we're going to take the oil pump off. We're going to do the mods we need to there and then we get to the fun stuff. This customer's opted for the shims so we're going to take the heads, the manifolds, and the barrels. We're going to put the shims in and then put everything back together. All right, guys, first thing we're going to do, we're going to rip these two carbs off. But before I do, I just want a disclaimer here. This is not a training video. If you are not proficient in engines and you're not comfortable doing this, please contact us. We will be happy to help you. If you are trained to do this, please be sure to follow the manuals and get in contact with us if you need any help or any pointers. We'll try and bring up some of the things to look out for in this video, but enough talking, let's get stuck in. First thing we're gonna be doing is taking these carbs off. There's two reasons that we do that. One is so we can get to the bowl, we can take the old jet and remove it, fit the jet that comes with the turbo kit, it's a bigger jet. Uh, and then the second reason is we need to stick a drip tray between the manifold and under the carbs. That's just in case of any leaks the bowl starts to leak, we don't want any of that fuel landing on our hot exhaust system. That would just be bad. So that's why we're taking everything off at the moment. Always good idea to have brightly colored plugs because you can see that. There we go. All right. Here we go. So very easy. Cut the locking wire on the bottom. Please, as always, keep your manuals next to you when you work. All right, first step, this big nut at the bottom. It is not on very tight, so it should pop off quite easy. There we go. The bolt comes out. Put that aside, we've got our floats. I'm gonna put the spanner on it. I'm just gonna Pop it off. All right, set that aside. Then we got our new jet that came in the kit. And we're gonna pop that on there. All right, now just hold it in place. Nut goes back on. There we go, all right. According to our manual, it's 5.5 Newton meters on the torque. Please be careful not to over torque these because it bends the bowl and then the gap between the main jet and the bottom of the bowl becomes too small. Fuel doesn't get in. So please be careful of that. I've already set the torque wrench. You'll see now 5.5 is really not a lot of torque. That's it. All right, so I'm just putting these away for now. Gonna keep them safe when we need them. Marked. All right, now we're gonna move on to taking the pumps off. We don't need these uh, mechanical fuel pumps because we use the electric pumps that come with the turbo upgrade. So let's get started. A little wiggle and pops right off. 
There we go. We'll be sure to clean up all of that. Along with the pump, these lovely fuel lines that come with the engines, we're gonna take them off because we use our own fuel lines supplied by the turbo kits. When you undo these screws, try to be careful not to take the thread all the way out on the end because to line it back up again is quite difficult. If you go all the way to the point where the screw is just shy of the end, coming out, you can actually slide it up. That makes life a lot easier. So, neat little trick to get the studs off. You start with one nut. Get that lined up and screwed on all the way to the bottom. Okay, once that's on, you get another one and you screw that on until it hits the first nut. You get two 13 spanners. And the idea here is to lock the two against each other. So this second one, we're gonna tighten it all the way. Now we're gonna turn the stud out using the first nut that we put in. Here we go. All right, just before it gets to the end of its threads, I like to unlock the nuts just so they're easy to take off. Grab yourself some parts cleaner. Some scotch bright. Some elbow grease. Okay, now that we've got the surface nice and clean, we're gonna put the 577 and we're gonna put the Loctite. So, blue Loctite. And right there, just a drop, it's all we need. All right, next up, 577, nice and messy. Very thin layer. We don't want to go over the top. We especially don't want any going into the gearbox. All right, then we get our plates. All right, we're checking our manual. 15 Newtons was the torque. One, two. All right, guys, so what we've done, we've taken the carbs off, we've taken the fuel pump off. Next. We're going to take the manifolds, ignition system with the spark plug leads, and we're going to take the coolant system off, heads, barrels, shims, put it all back together. Okay, here we go. We're going to start taking these heads and barrels off. First with the spark plug leads. I like to pop two of the spark plugs out of the top. This just helps when you're putting the heads and everything back on. You don't have to be a TDC, because all of the pressure comes out the top of the head. All right guys, while we're here with the modules and the plugs, one thing that's quite handy is they actually label the plugs for you, which is quite nice. So you've got your module A and your module B, and you know exactly which plugs are the correlating plugs because it's nicely labeled for us. Thanks, Ongjane. All right, here we go, guys. We've got the ignition system off and the spark plug leads are out of the way. Next is the manifolds. Next up, we're going to take the spider off.
valve covers are off. I want to just point out the nice serial numbers that they actually put on the, the rockers, which is quite handy. Again, everything is serialized, which is very, very nice of Zhongxin. We're going to break the torque on all of these nuts on the stretch bolts, take the heads off, barrels, and we'll show you everything along the way. One thing you always want to do is keep your hand underneath to make sure these rods don't go flying. A little pro tip for you, stick some fuel line on the stretch bolts and the piston can rest on the stretch bolts without getting damaged by the threads. Okay guys, we got the coolant system on, the spider is in. Next up is the manifold with the ignition system. I've already cleaned the surfaces and put a little dot of Loctite. The reason we put the manifolds on before we torque up the cylinder heads is it's a way of straightening out the two heads to each other. If you torque them without putting the manifolds on, what can happen is the one head can move slightly and the other can move in the opposite direction and then your manifolds won't be level with each other and it could leak from there. So always be sure to have the heads loose and put in your screws, torque your screws and then do the torquing sequence on the heads. All right guys, we've got the Heads back on, the manifolds are on, spark plug leads are in, and the coolant system's in. One thing we don't really like with the Zhongshens is all of this 577 that they put around the ceiling face of the head to the tablet covers. Uh, we just put in a nice o-ring there and torque it properly. So we're going to clean all of this up just like we did the fuel pump. All right, guys, we've got the engine all back together again, just like what it was. Now we've got our shims in place, everything's torque sealed and all nicely put back together. We're going to finish up with the last little odds and ends. We've got the oil pump to do, slap the carbs back on with their drip trays, and then we get to the turbo. Okay guys, we lined up here with our oil pump. We've got all of the parts we need from the kit. This is the next stage that's gonna feed the oil to the turbo and so that's why we're busy fitting another stage onto the oil pump. So you have your two lines at the bottom here as your feed and return. Um, so it's a pretty simple installation. For now, we're just busy putting the pieces together and then we'll talk everything out back on the engine. We've got these four bolts that come off of the housing. We don't need those because they're going to be too short. We get new ones from the kit that are much longer. So we're going to take the face of the housing off. And inside we can see the impeller. And the impeller has a pin holding it in place and then a shaft. We want to take that shaft out. Now, we've got these longer pins, they slide in. We've got our shaft, that comes in the back. I just want to put a little bit of oil on the shaft, the shaft goes in, and then the shaft has its little pin and it holds its impeller. Always do the inner impeller first and then do the outer. Just makes it easier when lining everything up. A little dot of oil, it is all lubed up already, but we're gonna give it just a little bit more. And then we're gonna do the second phase. All right, now it's our next pin and impeller. We're gonna oil that up as well. Pin goes in. inner and then the outer we make sure that our dot is lining up with us 
Okay, there we go. Right, now we've got all of the bits on the inside in. Now we put the faceplate on. Next up is we put the bolts through. All right, and then we'll get this torque back on the engine. All right, one thing about the Zhongshens is they don't have an O-ring that actually fits in to the manifold here. So we're gonna give this surface a clean, and then we're gonna put the drip tray on. The drip tray goes onto this face, and then this goes on the inside. So to make sure that this side is sealed, we put a little bit of 577 across the face of this, just to make sure that everything's sealed, and then this side, we do the same thing. All right, guys, we finished all of the accessories that go with the turbo upgrades, and we're finally at the point now where we're ready to put the turbo on, and uh, we'll show you everything at the end. All right, guys, we're all done. This is what the turbo upgrade looks like on the Zhongshen motors. It's officially a KFA 912 ULS ST. This is the 135 horsepower version, and this is the 100 horsepower version, so you can see the difference between the two. But from here, the engine's ready to go into a container and be shipped to you, or go on one of our planes down in production. I hope this video has helped. I hope it's put your mind at ease when it comes to the Zhongshens a little bit. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and uh, we'll be sure to get back to you on all of them. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in part three.